So now that you've made your first map, I'd like to show you how to put it on a page in InDesign. InDesign is an industry standard page layout software and it serves as a place where you can bring together graphics that you've made in Illustrator or Photoshop and some text that you might have authored in Word and arrange them on a page together. You can use it to design a one-page flyer, a poster, even a whole book or anything in between. In this video I'll show you how to make a new document, place your map on a page, and make a text box so you can write about your map. So we'll start by coming up here to the file menu and clicking on new and document. And here we'll get some options as to how to set up our document. Uh, first, we, we want to set it up for printing, so we'll leave it on that. For the sake of this example, I'll say that we should have four pages in this document. And because we're not going to be making a book, we would really rather not have them be facing each other. Facing pages means that they're folding out along a spine just like a book. We'll leave the page size on letter uh, and a portrait orientation. You could change the size if you wanted to make something like a poster to a custom size. And just to note, all of the units in here are in picas, which is a print unit. If we were to type in something like, uh, say, a half an inch for the margins, I'll come down here and say 0.5 inch, it'll automatically convert that to picas. You'll see three picas is a half an inch. I'm going to give us two columns because we'd like to put graphics on one side of our page and text on the other. And then the gutter is just the space between the columns. And I'll make that 0.5 inches as well, three picas. And click OK. So here you can see we have our page set up with margin guides and uh, the gutter guide between the two columns. Just like Illustrator, these guides won't be printed. They're just there to help us lay our page out. And if we come over to the Pages panel, you can see that there are four pages in our document. The Pages panel is a really handy way to sort of see the outline of your document. And as you start bringing elements onto the page, such as images and text and so forth, you'll see that they're, they're represented in these little thumbnails of the pages. There are panels in InDesign just like there are in Illustrator. They work pretty much the same way. Here we have uh, the, the Pages panel sort of docked on the side. I could drag it out if I wanted to have it stick around for, for longer and not ever sort of go away. I can also uh, use any of the tools over here in the toolbar, pretty much set up the same way as Illustrator with some familiar tools like selection, direct selection, we've got the type tool, even the pen tool, and then our stroke and fill tools down here. There's also the option bar up here where you can see, since I'm clicking on the type tool, you can see all sorts of options for different type styles. So let's get started by putting our map on the page. If we go up to the file menu, there's an option for something called place. And placing is how you put graphics onto the page in Illustrator. You can also use it for things like text. And the idea behind place is that instead of actually importing the entire graphic or text document into your, Illustrator, into your InDesign document, you're just linking to that file. You're telling InDesign, this is where this file is located on my hard drive or on the network. And whenever it goes to export something like a PDF document or to print, it can go back to that file, grab a high resolution, version of it and then use that to print. So that keeps the size of an InDesign file down. You can have an InDesign file that's many thousands of pages and is only a few megabytes because all of the graphics in it and even sometimes the text that's in it are linked back to individual files that are elsewhere. It also makes it very easy to edit things like graphics that are in an InDesign file because you just edit them in Illustrator. As soon as you save them in Illustrator uh, and open up your InDesign file, it'll say, this file has been changed, would you like to update it? And you just click yes, and then you get your new version. So we're going to go ahead and place. And you can see I'm already working in the directory for week one on the courses server, uh, where my version of the Green Mountains map is, and you have access to that as well. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to click Show Import Options here, so that when I click Open, we'll just get a few options. You don't need to, to show the import options, but this is just to demonstrate that there are quite a few different ways that you can import this. If there was a multi-page document, say a multi-page PDF, you could import one page versus another, or you could even import all of the pages, and they would come in in different frames. Because that we're importing an Illustrator file, we can actually see all the layers in that Illustrator file. Um, and this is a good demonstration of the fact that all of the Adobe products are pretty well integrated with each other. So InDesign can see the layers in, in Illustrator files. They can also see the layers in Photoshop files. And it's really helpful that they've been designed sort of with the other in mind. 
will show all of the layers and we'd like it to crop to the bounding box which in this case is the artboard uh, and we're, we're very happy with that we see a little preview uh, the thumbnail right there if we click OK it'll load the document and then we've got this cursor with a little thumbnail of our map just showing us where to, it's going to insert that that graphic so if I click we'll get the full-size graphic there it's a little bit larger than we'd like it to be and so I'm gonna come over and get the selection tool here and you'll see that there's some handles around the edges if I make the make the frame that this document is in smaller you'll see that it actually didn't change the size of the graphic it just changed the size of the frame that the graphic was in and that's uh, something that is actually pretty handy about InDesign is that it's storing the graphic and the and the frame containing it separately which means that say if you wanted to zoom in on a certain area of your map you could do that pretty effectively or if you wanted to to crop your map it's very easy to do that it does make resizing graphics just one step harder though I'll undo that resize and come over to the transform tool which is down here on the toolbar if I click that and then go to resize my map I'm holding shift so it constrains the proportions here then you can see that it's changing the size of the frame and the size of the graphic inside of it together and I'll just drag that up it'll snap to those guides so as I was saying you can change uh, you can change the size of the graphic independent from that of the frame and say that I wanted to zoom in on a certain part of the graphic I'd come over here and grab the direct select tool which just like it does in Illustrator is going to help us select just a part of the graphic in this case just the just the graphic inside of the frame rather than the frame itself and you can see that the bounding box has changed to to brown and that's to indicate that you're working with the graphic inside the frame and if I was to expand that you'll see that I've sort of zoomed in on that on that graphic because it's expanded around the inside of the frame and then I can move it around with the hand tool so I could highlight just a, a portion of the map so let's say that I wanted to make some text next to this I could just come over to the type tool here and I'll get this cursor that's uh, for the type tool and then I can just draw a box text box the same way I would in Illustrator and say this is my map and there are options up here in the control bar for changing changing text styles there's also a, parag a paragraph and a character panel down here so in the character panel I've got all my options for uh, for different fonts different font sizes just like I do in Illustrator and again in the paragraph panel for justification and for tabs etc so now I'm just going to show you how to save your InDesign document up in file you can save as and this will produce an InDesign file that will store your page layout settings and that file extension will be INDD you can also export your document so if we come up to file and hit export then we'll be producing a PDF which is really handy for sharing with other people uh, all of your graphics will be embedded in the PDF so you won't have to send them linked files as well but uh, you won't be able to go back and edit this PDF the same way that you were able to edit your your InDesign file so it's a good idea to maintain a copy of an InDesign file and then only export if you're going to be sort of previewing your document or sending it to somebody else. Lastly, I'd like to just show you the links panel up here, which is a listing of all of the different linked files within your document. In this case, I just have one. It's this CH Green Mountains map.ai file. And it's worth noting now that you can link to all sorts of different file types. So this is an Illustrator file. I can link to a PDF. I can link to uh, all sorts of different image format, JPEG, TIFF, bitmap, GIF. I can link text that I would put into a text frame so if I link to a word file then I can just drop that into a text frame the links panel is going to show us the status of the links in this case the the status is is good on all of these there isn't any sort of warning in this box but say I was to go change this file then it would give me a little warning icon here that would say you have changed this if it can't find the file perhaps you've moved it to a different place it'll tell you I can't find you uh, and then you would use this fix link button down here in order to show InDesign where that file is